All right, everybody. Uh, we're just going to give everyone a couple minutes to uh, to get online here uh, as we go live. Uh, but we'll do introductions in just a second. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Michael Danahy. Uh, I work for UK Housing, and um, I'll let my colleagues introduce themselves. Uh, my name is Mel Lesh. Um, I work for the Office of Residence Life and Academic Initiatives, and I work with the Living Learning Programs at UK. My name is Brendan Turner. I work for University of Kentucky Dining, um, and yeah. <laughs> and he's a student here, yeah, which I'm is student. cool. I'm an intern. Uh, fun fact, I know how to dab better than Cam Newton, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right. Well, other than that really uncomfortable joke, <laughs> We'll go ahead and get started. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, living on campus or campus and the application that goes with it. Um, as we just said, we have representatives here from housing, dining and Res Life to talk about the living learning programs as well. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, a little bit of an overview for today's topics. We're going to discuss first uh, the living learning programs. Then next, room type and area of campus. Third, we're gonna talk about our dining options here at UK. Then we're going to kind of do a bit of a walkthrough, very brief walkthrough of the application in case you haven't filled it out yet. And lastly, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to do a Q&A. So uh, for the Q&A session at the end, uh, be sure to look in the top right corner of your screen. You're going to see a graphic that kind of looks like a grid. It's a bunch of small squares that make up a larger square. And uh, you can go ahead and click that icon and choose the Q&A option and you'll be able to type in your questions and we will be sure to answer them at the end. So if you need to take notes at home or anything, be sure to do that. All right, well, let's go again and get started. Okay, um, I'm gonna take you through some of our living learning programs for next year. Um, and then, you know, at the end, if you'd like to ask some questions, I can try to answer them to the best of my ability. So first off, um, here's kind of an overview of all the different um, living learning programs or living learning communities that we have coming next year. Um, some of them are new, some of them are returning, and so you have kind of a good mixture. Um, the first one that I'll talk about is the Agriculture Living Learning Program. Um, that's for first year students in the College of Agriculture, Food and Environment. So if you have a major in the College of Agriculture, you can um, connect with faculty. You can also live in the residence hall with other ag majors. Um, and since we have a lot of agriculture programs in Kentucky, that's a really popular one. Our next one is Business Enterprise. Those are for first and second year students in the Gatton College of Business and Economics. If you have a declared major of business and in the Business and Economics College, um, you can actually live, <coughs> excuse me, with other business majors um, and be connected to faculty and staff, peer mentors who've been through the program before, um, and take classes actually in Champions Court One, which is the residence hall that you live in. So you can go down there in your pajamas if you want to. The next community is a CI Connect community. That's for first year students in the College of Communication and Information. Um, you actually get to interact with uh, faculty members like Dr. DeSantez. Um, you can take classes in your residence hall also. You um, have peer mentors that help you out, do programming around communication, um, and it really kind of gets you started with um, you know, journalism and information, um, those majors from the get-go, from the time you start on campus. The next community is actually a new community for next year. It's for any student that's interested in the creative and performing arts. So arts and sciences and the Fine Arts College will actually team up for um, this new community. You will be surrounded by other students who are interested in different creative arts. Um, there's a performance space that'll be in the new residence hall, Limestone Park One. Um, there'll also be different practice rooms and things like that. So they're hoping to um, kind of take the community that already exists this year and then expand it and make it more of a you know thriving kind of any student who's just interested in art forms um, community for next year. The next community is EdLife, and it's for any student that's um, 
declared college of education. So you can actually be a returning student for this one too. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, they have site visits, mentoring, networking opportunities. Um, you can go to classrooms, you can connect with peer mentors, you can do programming around education. Um, and so it's actually one community that um, can get you connected to your future field. The next community is engineering. Um, the engineering residential college is for students majoring in the College of Engineering. Um, they actually have new students, first year students and returners that are in this residence hall um, in this community. And they have classes in, they have several classes in the classroom. They have programming. They actually have a programming, um, excuse me, a programming um, passport that they're, tr they're starting out this year. Um, and it's really intentional about study sessions and peer mentors. It's a, a very engaging community. And if you're interested in engineering, then that's a fantastic one to complement your experience. The next community is the first gen community. So it's for first year students who are also first generation college students and that's for students who um, whose parents did not go to college or didn't complete college. Um, so those those connections that some people might already have if their parents are able to help them buy books, for example, or kind of talk to them about the advising process or career exploration. Um, the first gen community will actually help you with that. They'll step in, do programming and give you some kind of mentorship. The next community is the honors community. Those are for students who've actually already been admitted into the honors program. This is the only community that has kind of a separate application. So to apply for this community, you have to apply for the honors program and be accepted before you can be accepted into the honors living learning program. Um, they actually have programs that are happening all the time. Um, so they have Harry Potter month in October where they have over, I think they said they had over 65 programs this year that were related to Harry Potter and different activities. And so if you're interested in and kind of taking your your college experience up a notch um, honors is a great opportunity an honors living learning program is a great opportunity to live with other honors students and then engage with faculty that are really um, involved with the honors program at UK the next community is the interprofessional healthcare residential college um, that community actually is for first year students who are interested in healthcare, um, and there's nine different colleges that are partnered with that. So the colleges of dentistry, medicine, health sciences, nursing, pharmacy, public health, social work, communication and information, ag, food, and environment. Um, and so it's, there's a lot of activity that happens. And so if you're forward thinking about going into anything of the healthcare field, this is a great way to kind of start out, get some experience, be with other people who are interested in healthcare, and then take classes in the residence hall with um, some peer mentors that can kind of help guide you. Lex Engage, <coughs> excuse me. Lex Engage is open to any first year student and it's focused on students who are interested in um, collaborating with the community, doing some leadership programming, some civic engagement programming. And so if you're someone that likes to have kind of a, um, a community focus instead of just you know being at UK, you can also get involved in different efforts in the community that are like nonprofits or or doing some service work. The ROTC community are for people who are in the ROTC program that might need help remembering to go to PT every day um, or take classes or, or you know do things with the leadership programs that are through ROTC. And so they have a really great community that can kind of support you in a lot of the aspects that are required of being in the ROTC program. The next community is STEM cats. If your major has anything to do with science, technology, engineering, or math, um, you can participate in STEM cats. So when you first move on to campus, which is a week and a half before school starts, you take some really intensive courses around those four, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math um, fields, and you get prepared for some more, some of the more challenging math and science courses that might kind of you know, hit you as a first year student. This way you also have study groups that are kind of created for you and you're able to really work with um, other faculty members that can give you some more direct attention in those fields, especially since um, some of those courses can be really difficult for first year students. The next community is the transfer community. If you have already, excuse me, if you've already um, had some experience at another university and you're transferring out to U into UK, you're already familiar with the college program in general, but you're not familiar with UK, you can live in a residence hall with other transfer students who are interested in 
and succeeding just like you are. And so you already have that close knit community of people with kind of the same struggles that you have. Next, we have WIRE. This is through the College of Arts and Sciences. And really, if you're interested in um, working on interdisciplinary things, so if you're a French major, but you're really interested in international politics, or if you're a philosophy major, but you really want to see how math kind of fits with philosophy, um, WIRED is really a great way to work on the interdisciplinary issues um, and get some access to great faculty members that can kind of help you, especially if you're exploring some things and you want to incorporate technology in that. Kinesiology and health promotion is actually combining with the wellness community for next year. And so you don't have to be a kinesiology and health promotion major to participate in this community. But if you're interested in healthy living in any way, shape or form, this is a great community for you to participate in. You'll be close to the different um, exercise options that are available on campus. You'll be surrounded by people who are really intent on um, trying to make sure that wellness is a huge part of their lives. And so this is a community if you're really focused on health and wellness and also helping other people um, through that with a KHP major. All right, guys. Well, thank you, Mel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you guys about room type of area, an area of campus. Uh, just a reminder, be sure to uh, go to that grid icon on the top right corner of your screen and uh, put in some Q&As for the Q&A sec section of the uh, broadcast, and we'll be able to answer those questions for you there at the end. Um, we have lots of answers, and you guys have lots of questions. So um, what you're looking at right there is a nice uh, shot of our central campus area. you got three residence halls and a dining facility in that shot. Um, so with that in mind, we'll go ahead and move into uh, first our room types. So the first room type that we have today to talk about uh, are the traditional room type. That is gonna be a double occupancy bedroom, um, community bathroom, and those twin XL beds. Uh, this is what you're gonna think about when you think um, you know, that original, that kind of classic style of residence hall uh, here on UK's campus. Um, it's gonna be located in the Blanding Kerwin complex. And what's really nice about these residence halls uh, are that they provide a really good sense of community because you're going to be um, seeing people, uh, you know, on your way to the restroom. You'll be able to brush your teeth with people and, you know, just really build a nice sense of community with your uh, friends there in the hall. And on the screen there, you can see it costs a little over uh, 2400 per semester. Our next room type on campus here is the four-person suite. The four-person suite has semi-private bathroom or bedroom, excuse me, uh, bed or bathroom as well, and twin XL beds. Uh, this kind of takes that traditional um, room type to the next level there, uh, and you'll be able to share that bathroom between uh, three other roommates, which is going to be nice because you know you have your regular roommate, but then you also have your suite mates as well, which are going to be two more instant friends. Um, as you can see, it's located in a variety of residence halls ac across campus. Um, and so a little over $3,600 a semester. Um, so be sure to uh, think about that when you are filling out your housing application. Our next room type and also our most common room type on campus is the two bedroom suite. Uh, the two bedroom suite consists of a private bedroom, semi-private bathroom, full XL beds, and we have also granite countertops. Those beds uh, as well in the four person suite as well are Tempur-Pedic mattresses, so you can kind of get excited about that. Uh, and just to kind of put it in perspective, a full XL is just slightly smaller than a queen size bed. You're gonna have, um, you know, that nice little common area there, you each get your own sink, and then you and your roommate are gonna share um, uh, the bathroom there. Also, uh, this, as I said, is our most common room type on campus. Um, it's in a variety of halls all across campus from north to central <laughs> to south campus as well. Uh, so just think about that as you're applying um, and if you know if you feel comfortable with this room type and you like what you see here uh, then you're probably in a pretty good spot as far as price that's just over four thousand a semester uh, so just continue to think about that as you're weighing your different options here on campus we're going to next talk about the four bedroom suite and that four bedroom suite kind of takes that two bedroom suite and uh, bumps it up a notch. Imagine it takes two of them and put it, puts them together. It's going to have a private bedroom for each person, semi-private bathrooms, 
Uh, so you and one of the other roommates would share one. And then you'd have those full XL beds, uh, those granite countertops. And this one has a bit of a kitchenette with um, you know, a table and four chairs, a nice big refrigerator, and kind of a couch and lounging area for you and your roommates to hang out in. This room type is only available in two of our room, uh, buildings here on campus, Limestone Park 2, which is opening here in the fall, and Champions Court 2, which is already existing here on campus. And it's a little over 4,400 a semester. Finally, we're going to talk about the two-bedroom deluxe suite, which is a brand new room type coming to campus this uh, fall. It has a private bedroom, semi-private bathroom, full XL beds, granite countertops, kitchenette. So if you're looking at it, it's a, basically a two-person version of the four-bedroom suite that we just saw. This room type is only available in Limestone Park 2. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you are filling out your application. Um, if everybody puts that down, uh, we're not going to be able to have filled everybody's needs. But obviously, if this is where you feel like you'd like to go, feel free to put that as your first choice. And as you see, it's about 4700 a semester. So next, let's talk about area of campus. Uh, this is kind of a, a map that we have here showing um, an aerial uh, view of campus. Uh, we have a lot of different residence halls. This is North Campus. Um, including Limestone Park 1 and 2, which will open this coming fall. Uh, have no fear. We also have Roselle Hall, Champions Court 1 and Champions Court 2. Um, students who would live on North Campus would be a quick walk to downtown and Rupp Arena, if that's something that you're interested in. A uh, very short walk to Common Grounds, which is a nice local coffee shop that we have here, and the UK <coughs> Bookstore, uh, where you can get all your essential campus needs. Next, we have Central Campus. Uh, Central Campus consists of, consists of Central Hall uh, 2 uh, and Lyman T. Johnson Hall, which uh, is the new name of Central Hall 1. Also, we have Hagen Hall there, um, and these have a variety of room types throughout those uh, three buildings there. What's really nice is you're going to be really close to that academic section of campus. You're going to be near the Starbucks uh, within uh, William T. Young Library, our awesome library facility that we have here and uh, just a quick walk to the 90, which you will see in a second. The 90 is right there. It's a dining facility that we have on campus, and it is kind of our dining hub for all of South Campus, which, as you can see, there is a very large amount of residence halls on South Campus. Other than short distance to the 90, what's nice about South Campus residence halls, um, they kind of have that big, nice courtyard area there in between those Woodland Glen residence halls, um, and they're a real nice short walk to the athletic facilities like track and field, baseball stadium, the Johnson Center, which is our athletic uh, workout center here on campus, and everybody's favorite Commonwealth Stadium. All right, thank you, Michael. Uh, now we're gonna talk about dining a little bit. Michael mentioned um, the 90, which is on South Campus. I just wanna let you guys know that the 90 is brand new this year um, with a bunch of different restaurants. Uh, our main uh, dining hall, residential dining hall on South Campus is located in the 90, um, called Fresh Food Company. We also have uh, a couple other restaurants, La Madeline, uh, which is a, um, a bakery type restaurant. Uh, we also have Taco Bell, if any of you guys like your um, late night Taco Bell, we have that on campus available for you. Um, and then we have Ovid's, um, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, a campus um, restaurant. And then also a local sushi company, Aqua Sushi. Um, not just the restaurants on campus with dining, but we also have convenience stores. Um, they're called Wildcat Pantries. It's pretty much your typical convenience store. Um, like when you walk into a gas station, you're trying to get a snack or a beverage really quick. So <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the meal plans a little bit. Uh, first, I'm going to explain what's on the meal plans, and then we'll go over each meal plan. Um, so first. We have two residential dining halls on campus. We have Blazer and FFCO, which is our abbreviation for Fresh Food Company. Um, those are where you're gonna get your best deal for your uh, meal plan because you get the most food. They are all you care to eat restaurants uh, with all kinds of different food. We have a traditional station um, and even we have uh, international food um, as well. So we have our meals uh, at the residential dining halls and then we also have Wildcat deals. 
what those are are meals that aren't used at the residential dining halls. So we let our students um, go to some national brands and then some restaurants on campus, um, including that Ovid's that I mentioned. We have an Intermezzo, a Fusion, and then some of our national brands, uh, which are, if you guys like Chick-fil-A, we have Chick-fil-A on campus. Uh, we have Subway. We have um, Taco Bell. Taco Bell is not in the Wildcat deals, uh, but Chick-fil-A, Subway, and Panda Express are included in those Wildcat deals. Um, and then we have flex dollars that are uh, that are included in your meal plans. Uh, the way I explain flex dollars is it is a declining debit balance um, for your food on campus. So if you don't want to use a full meal, if you don't want to eat all that food um, at this point, then you can go ahead and use flex dollars. You can use them at any of our restaurants on campus as well as our convenience stores. Um, so if you want to uh, get a snack or you want to buy a food for a friend, that's a good way to do it. Uh, so now I'll go ahead and talk about the different meal plans on campus. We'll start out with the basic seven. Um, if you live on campus, you're required to have a meal plan. So all students that live on campus are going to start out with the basic seven, um, which is seven meals per week and then $200 in flex dollars, uh, which I explained. And of course, those meals will be used at Blazer and Fresh Food Company, where you'll get uh, your best value for the meal as well as those Wildcat deals across campus. Um, as you can see, there's the cost there per semester, which uh, our meal plans, I forgot to mention, are based on meals per week. So this obviously is a seven meal per week plan, which averages out to a meal a day. Um, and you can use that however you would like. Uh, the only thing is your meals do not roll over. So say you use only five meals, your two meals left over will not roll over to the next week. So you want to go ahead and use all those meals that you can. Uh, next, I'll go to the white 10. Um, this is 10 meals per week, which uh, the price is listed there, uh, $15.50 per semester. This is um, meals that can be used at Blazer and Fresh Food Company once again. Um, and then $300 in flex. So as you can see, you're getting 10 meals. You're getting a little bit more flex dollars. Um, and the one nice thing about the, this plan is you get guest meals. So you get five guest meals per semester on this plan, which means if you have friends from um, that don't go to the school, if you have parents, um, family members that come that aren't on campus, you can go ahead and use these guest meals uh, for them and they won't have to pay anything. Um, it's, a, it's a free meal given to you um, on the meal plan. Um, and then we go to the blue 14, which is 14 meals per semester or per week, excuse me, um, which the price is there, which is 1930 per semester. Um, these, this also includes $300 in flex, which um, one thing I would like to mention about flex dollars is those are um, per semester. The $300 is listed per semester, but if you don't use all that $300 in one semester, it will roll over to the spring semester, but it will end at the end of the spring semester. So if you use $200 for the fall semester, um, you'll come back for the spring semester with $400 flex. But if you don't use all of that by the end of the year, by the end of the school year, um, it will be gone. Um, one more thing about the blue 14 is it includes 10 guest meals instead of five. So you're getting um, a better value there. Um, and then I'm going to talk about our all access plan, which is the best value. Um, it is $21.50 per semester. You get unlimited meals per week um, at Blazer and Fresh Food Company. So we, we recommend that you go to Blazer and Fresh Food Company because those are the all you care to eat restaurants. Uh, those are where you will get the uh, most food for your money. Um, the the bullet right there says four wildcat deals per day we have four meal plans um, listed out which are pretty much breakfast lunch dinner and then late night um, so you get one wildcat deal per day or four wildcat deals per day and one wildcat deal per period um, and then also another thing with blazer and fresh food company you get unlimited meals per day but you cannot swipe um, every, you can only swipe every half hour. So we do put a limit on that just a little bit. 
Um, and then included in that plan, you get $300 in flex and also 10 guest meals per semester. Um, so that's all about the um, dining plans. I just wanted to mention uh, we do have right now we have about 26 locations on campus. We are adding a good amount next year. Actually, we are adding three more restaurants and uh, three pantries, those convenience stores that I told you about. Um, I told you about the national brands like Chick-fil-A, Subway, Taco Bell. Um, we have a rising rule, which is an Atlanta based company, very good food. Um, and then Einstein bagels, if you've ever heard of that one. Uh, new next year, we actually just announced it to our students, is that we will be having a steak and shake um, located right on Limestone Avenue. Um, actually, it will be located underneath uh, Limestone Park 1. Um, so if you guys are thinking about what uh, meal plan you should choose, um, steak and shake is going to be on campus next year. So. Um, and then just to mention some other ones, I told you uh, Fusion, Intermezzo, um, and then we have, we just want to let you know that we do have restaurants located on North, South, Central Campus. Um, we have a restaurant located in the Ag, the Ag College. Um, we have a restaurant located in the Pharmacy College, the Engineering College, and uh, we will actually be putting a restaurant in the Business College. Um, this coming fall. Uh, don't forget, guys, to mention to uh, ask questions on dining if you have any, and we'll be glad to answer them um, at that section of the broadcast. All right, thank you, sir. Guys, don't forget, as he said, to ask those questions at the end of the broadcast. Um, top right corner of your screen there is going to be the best way to submit those questions for us to see. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you all, um, give you a little brief overview of the 2016-2017 Living on Campus application. Um, what's nice about this application is it is all-inclusive. We do we put everything right in the same spot for you. So the Living Learning Program application, the Dining application, and the Housing application are all there on that uh, same spot. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so step one's pretty easy. Uh, start it, <laughs> start your application. Um, obviously, there's a lot of benefits to living on campus, as you guys have seen. Um, a lot of them include just sheer convenience, uh, close to your classes. Uh, so who wouldn't want to live on campus? Why wouldn't you want to begin your application? Step two, um, you're just gonna need to put some personal details, and step three is a little bit of background, just to kind of get you started. Uh, you know, simple, basic stuff, nothing too complicated. Step four is the contract. Um, housing agreements are for a full academic year, so we like to remind everybody that uh, through this contract. And you know what's awesome about this is nothing is official without a signature. Uh, so as long as you get that contract uh, digitally signed, uh, your housing application, dining application, living learning program application uh, will be good to go once you click submit at the end. Step five is going to be a $50 non-refundable application fee. Uh, this is pretty standard, um, and it's just going to help you uh, lock down your application and make sure that it gets submitted. All right, now we get to start talking about some of the fun stuff. Step six is going to be that living learning program application. Uh, you are not obligated to participate in a living learning program here on campus, but if you show, so choose to try to apply for one, uh, this is going to be when you uh, list that. Uh, if you're not interested in any, just hit no preference on all the uh, options that you have to list one. But uh, you are allowed to apply for several living learning programs, uh, three of them, in fact, if there's any that you have uh, you know, a preference to. Step seven is going to be room type and area of campus. Uh, that's going to be that section that I talked about um, in the beginning of the presentation, middle, beginning to middle of the presentation. Um, you're going to pick uh, where your preferences are to live, an area, um, what your preference uh, as far as room type is, whether you want that two-bedroom suite, um, you know, those traditional rooms, four-bedroom, uh, four-person, two-bedroom deluxe, etc. Step eight is going to be your personal preferences. 
uh, personal preferences, meaning uh, just kind of your lifestyle choices, um, you know, where uh, your preferences are and in, in, in how, you know, you carry your day to day self. This is just going to kind of help us um, with uh, where to place you and who to place you with. Step number nine is the meningitis vaccination. Uh, every student who lives on campus here at the University of Kentucky is required to have a meningitis vaccination. Uh, we want to make sure that all our students are nice and healthy and everybody's in the best environment they can be in. Uh, so just you need to submit a proof of that vaccination there on that part of the application. Step 10 is going to be your meal plan. Uh, everybody's pretty hungry, I'm sure, after listening to those lovely dining options that we have. Uh, so you can go on there and uh, you know pick uh, what amount of flex you'd like, how many meals per week, um, kind of brainstorm how many times you're going to be drinking a milkshake at Steak and Shake. And then also, uh, steps in 11 and 12 have to do with your roommate. Um, 11 is uh, what's called the roommate search. Um, if you're not sure who you'd like to room with, uh, and you know you're kind of open to coming to campus and getting a maybe a random roommate, um, but maybe it's you know random in the sense that uh, you've never met them before, but you'd like to at least uh, have an idea who you're going to live with. Uh, we provide the option for you to search the available roommates here at UK, and you guys can kind of work together, uh, put you both down. You make sure you put uh, each of you down as the selected roommate that you would prefer to have, and you can do that in step 12, the roommate preferences section. Um, as I just mentioned, uh, for that to happen, uh, you need to make sure that you and your roommate select each other as their top choice. All right, we are going to talk about some deadlines here. Uh, we've got a lot of important deadlines coming up. Uh, as you can see, the early action track uh, to apply for housing, and just to clarify, early action track, those of you who are on the early action track, it meant that you applied to UK by December the 1st and were accepted. So congratulations, uh, you're you know getting ahead of the game and we love to see that. Uh, but that early action track deadline for housing is February the 15th, which is this coming Monday. So be sure to get that application in if you haven't already. Um, as for regular decision, maybe you know you're not able to get that application in on February the 15th. Um, you can do that uh, and apply for housing by April the 1st. Some benefits uh, to the early action track: um, the earlier that you get your application in, um, the better chance of getting your personal preferences uh, are, just because uh, we do our assignments on a first come, first served basis. Uh, also, uh, if you apply. Uh, by February the 15th, you should receive your building assignment by April 15th. So you can kind of get excited about your future here at UK uh, because, I mean, who wouldn't be? And as you can see, those are the last remaining uh, dates and deadlines there. Um, you know, June the, June the 1st for regular decision and um, June 30th to receive that information. All right, don't forget guys, in just a minute or so here, we're gonna be doing our Q&A section, uh, but that is gonna be um, where you can submit those questions that you've gained uh, throughout the presentation. I'm gonna kind of show you here our social media logos and everything, uh, because we definitely want you guys to engage with us on social media. We love getting shout outs. Um, if you have any questions throughout your um, process, you can uh, go ahead and just uh, tweet at us. You can comment on our Facebook pages. Uh, we all really like to hear feedback and everything. Um, and as for the Q&A section, uh, don't forget that top right corner of your screen, uh, the grid looking icon, uh, it's a gray grid. Uh, you can go ahead and click that and that's how you're gonna get to those Q&As. I'm gonna leave these social media logos on the screen for just a few more seconds, just in case anybody's jotting them down. Uh, if you know you're quickly going and uh, following us right now, I wouldn't want you to miss out on anything. So I'll give you just a sec. <coughs> All right, hey guys, uh, that was really good fun. Uh, I know I enjoyed talking about the application and everything with you all. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on this Q&A section. Um, feel free to submit your questions as we go and uh, we'll try and tackle them as best as possible. So let's see. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, so it looks like we have some LLP questions that are posted on the Q&A section. Um, the first is, when do you have to accept LLP offers by, and when will finding how, final housing decisions be made? Um, like we said, the final deadline for living learning programs is April 1st, like the final deadline for housing applications. Um, we actually ask our partners to make those decisions um, officially by kind of May, May 1st. Um, and so those are like, like the final decisions. But we actually make decisions about living learning programs on a rolling basis. Um, and so communities are sending out offers. Um, they're actually sending out offers through um, a service that we have that sends an email to you. And so whatever email you put on your housing application is the email that you'll be contacted through with instructions on how to go in and accept a living learning program offer. Now, keep in mind, some people might be getting offers already. Um, if your first community decides not to make an offer to you, then you are, you know, kind of into the process for the second preference community and your third preference community. So just because you haven't heard something immediately doesn't mean that you're not in, in, in a community either. So um, it's a rolling basis. Decisions are made kind of all the time and um, emails are sent out often. And so um, the final emails will be sent in like, I'd say May 1st, um, but you should hear something before that as far as the um, applications. Thanks, Mel. Um, we've got a couple questions here about just the application in general and your roommates. Um, let's see. First off, when do we have to have our roommate requests finalized by? Um, you uh, just need to make sure that you add them via your online application, um, like we were talking about there. Uh, you both need to add each other and uh, confirm each other as uh, your choices. Uh, but you'll find out your final roommate um, by June 30th. Uh, so just make sure you get in before then, um, preferably be, preferably uh, sooner rather than later. Um, but, you know, everybody has to decide where they're going to be going to school by May the 1st. So I would definitely recommend getting in by then. Um, do I need to submit my vaccination records by the February 15th deadline? Uh, no, you just need to make sure that you get those records in by the time that you move in here. Uh, obviously, it's good to get vaccinated as early as possible, but we realize that people have different schedules and everything. So, um, Someone asked, do freshmen usually get their first choice in rooms? Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the applications are done on a rolling basis, first come, first serve. Uh, however, we do have a really accommodating assignment staff, so we try our best to get everybody's preferences in there. Um, just. I wouldn't say that any particular person has preference over another, just as long as you get your application in early. Um, I see if the major, if my major will be physical therapy, which LLP, healthcare, or kinesiology. Um, as far as that goes, it really depends on what you want to focus on your first year. Um, if you are really interested in getting kind of a jump start on physical therapy and you really want to kind of focus on that for your whole time at the university, then I would suggest applying for healthcare. Um, if you're interested in just the more wellness, um, being around students who are also participating in some of the same classes that you're taking, I would probably focus on kinesiology and health promotion just because um, that's what a lot of first year students will be taking those types of classes. And so it really depends on what you want to spend your time focusing on. Um, I also see can non honor students live in the honors LLP if there's space available. Um, the great thing about our residence halls is that um, even though all the communities are kind of spread out in different buildings, you can usually participate in some of the programming that happens even if you're not in a living learning program. The honors living learning program actually is spread out through three different residence halls. And so um, if you live in those residence halls and you're in the honors program, just because you're not technically in the living learning program doesn't mean that you're not going to get to participate in the classes that are in the buildings or the programming or Harry Potter month, that kind of thing. So if you really are interested in um, getting the full honors experience, I'd advise you to actually select the honors living learning program as your first preference and apply to honors. Um, but if you don't do that and you just get placed in Hagen, um, Johnson, Lyman T. Johnson or Central 2, that's fine. Also, you can still participate. Let's see. We got a lot of questions on here, guys. Oh, Thank no. you. I'm trying to get through them all. Um, Freshmen, freshmen can bring cars. There we go. Yeah. Um, I will tell you, the <laughs> parking a is atrocious. 
Parking is parking is good, but the, it's really hard to park and have it close to you. So a lot of freshmen, if you get a parking pass, which is through Parking and Transportation Services, you actually have to go. A lot of people get placed on K lot, um, which is closer to South Campus, but it's still a bit of a walk. There's actually a lot of buses on campus. A lot of people don't have cars. Um, it's a walk. I'd say you know from one end of the campus to the other, it's about 15 minutes. Um, and so as far as bringing a car to campus, you can. Um, but it's expensive because parking passes are several hundred dollars um, and then you probably won't use it as much as you think you will. Yeah, just to put things into perspective, I didn't have a car when I lived here on campus as a freshman and I'd say I turned out all right. Uh, but if you would like to have one, you do have the option. Uh, you're dabbing. <laughs> I don't know if it's better than Cam Newton. <laughs> um, to kind of go along with what Mel said, how long does it take to get from uh, central campus area to north campus area. Um, pretty much you can get anywhere on campus within a 20 minute or so walk. I'd say that section alone is only about 10 minutes or so. Um, and so if you have friends living on different areas of campus, it's not that hard to see them. I'm going to go ahead and add to that, uh, talking about the uh, time it takes to get to places. Um, our goal as dining is to allow you to have a restaurant near you within like a five minute walk. Um, so anywhere you are on campus, no matter if it's north, south, or central, you're always going to have a restaurant five minutes or even closer to you. Um, just to let you guys know about that also. Um, someone asked, though I'm having trouble finding it, I saw it as I was scrolling through, so I'll just go ahead and answer it. Uh, someone asked if the application is binding. Um, you're not sure if you want to attend UK yet, uh, but you still want to apply on the early track. Good. That's a great idea. Um, and this is important for everybody here. Um, no, your application at the moment is not a binding application. Um, the only thing right now that would be um, maybe, I guess, considered a loss if you chose not to come to the University of Kentucky would be that $50 application fee. Uh, so you have until, um, you know, May the 1st before anything is really set in stone. Um, someone asked about, they applied early decision, the early action track, um, and they were wondering which um, for LLPs, which, you know, calendar they should follow. Um, honestly, if you apply before April 15th um, for housing and living learning programs, um, we're going to work as a department to get um, an answer to you by March 15th um, for living learning programs. If you apply by April 1st, then that is pushed back to um, May and June, that kind of timeline. Um, I think one of our first questions, <clears throat> yes. Um, some people asked about the different days for move-in. Uh, Saturday, August the 13th is when uh, those ladies who are going to do sorority recruitment would move in. Um, for living learning programs or fast track, um, they're going to move in on Wednesday, August the 17th. Am fast, I right fast track was actually on Saturday, August oh, 13th. Oh, there you go. Saturday, August 13th is also fast track with the sorority move in. Uh, but the rest of living learning programs are going to do August the 17th. And our big blue move, uh, so the rest of our awesome students that will be coming here, is going to be Friday, August the 19th. Um, if for some reason that you're a returning student and you're on uh, this call right now, uh, your move-in would be on the 20th. Um, I see a question right there. Uh, can you change your meal plans in the middle of semester? Um, yes, the answer is yes, you can change your meal plans. We do have a deadline, though, where you can downgrade. Um, it's a couple weeks in the semester, but you can always upgrade your meal plan. So if you find out you're not having enough food um, during the week, you can always upgrade it to one of those higher plans um, for, for more food. Uh, someone asked if incoming freshmen are required to live on campus. You are not required to live on campus. Uh, however, I'm sure the three of us could tell you it's an awesome idea, um, mainly because um, students that live on campus are gonna have higher GPAs, they're gonna have an easier uh, transition um, from that high school life to college life because you can knock on your next door neighbor's door and you might not have met that person ever before, but um, you both have something in common because you're brand new wildcats. Uh, so it's really exciting, uh, you know, and you're also in the heart of all the action, whether it's athletics, academics, or dining, or what have you. So you got those cool climbing in. Yeah, and you have well. some really cool art. <laughs> Just had to mention <laughs> what LLP would you recommend for undergraduate studies? Well, 
the great thing is that we have so many options. Um, something that I wasn't able to mention before is that we have some communities that are not coming back for next year. So if you have seen the greenhouse community, if you've seen the INET community and you thought you about applying for that, um, those are actually not, they recently decided not to come back next year. So make sure that you're um, you know, kind of aware of that. But other than that, um, even if you're not in a specific major, there are a lot of communities that are actually open to any major and just focus on um, a specific idea. So um, those can be the Creative Arts Residential College. So if you have an arts flair, if you're into creative writing, or if you're into dance or music, or you like being around people that are, um, that's a great community where anyone can apply um, and be successful while they're kind of supplementing their experience at UK and whatever major they have. Um, other communities that are not restricted by major, um, Lex Engage, which is open to any first year student. So you can get to know the broader Lex community in addition to UK. Um, Wired Residential College, so that's for interdisciplinary studies for people who are really undecided about what major they'd like. Maybe they want to um, explore arts and sciences more, more in depth um, or other majors, then you can really kind of take different types of classes while you're doing that. Um, also the KHP and wellness community, if you'd like to focus on um, health and wellness in any way, shape or form, that's a great community to um, kind of keep in mind and it's not restricted by major. Um, I see a question that says, if I decline an LLP acceptance, Will it mess with my roommate or my housing or any of the other options that put me on the and put me on the bottom of a priority list? Um, the only way it would necessarily um, negatively affect your um, roommate uh, selection is with our living learning programs. You and your roommate would be you're housed with someone who lives in the program as well. Uh, so if you had a roommate pre preference that wasn't in the program, then that wouldn't be affected. Um, but what's nice about our application is um, as you're going through the application, the first part you're going to do. Um, as I mentioned before, is you're going to talk about the living, you're going to fill out that, those questions about the living learning program. Um, the next part you're going to do is you're going to list your housing preferences, whether it's um, room type or area of campus, um, and kind of the process that goes through it. Uh, if you decide not to do any of those living learning programs um, or you're not accepted, uh, it's going to move straight onto your housing preferences. So uh, depending on where you put your preference would uh, help determine where you would end up living later on, should you not do LLP. Um, I, there are several questions about LLPs. Do you have to select an LLP? No, um, that's just, you can put no preference. If you would like to not live in a living learning program, just select no preference for all three of those options. Um, also, I applied to the honors LLP on my housing application, but I'm still receiving emails encouraging me to apply. Um, that's the honors program really gets excited about their living learning program. And so um, even if you're getting emails, those are probably mass emails. Um, we're working on kind of filtering through the honors program, um, living learning process, the selection. So um, you should be hearing relatively shortly if you've already applied for the honors program and the honors LLP. Um, so even if you've already applied, don't, don't stress. If you really um, are kind of concerned about your application, feel free to email us at livelearn at uky.edu or call us 859-257-4784 um, and we can answer your questions. If you have an issue with your application, your housing application, we can actually unlock sections of your application so you can go back and make changes. So if you decide a couple weeks after you applied for a living learning program that you just don't want to do that anymore, we can actually unlock your application and you can go back and change things. Um, someone asked, would living in a two bedroom style uh, room make it harder for a freshman from out of state to get acclimate, acc acclimated? That's a hard word to say, uh, to the new school. Uh, no, I would not say so. Um, what's nice, I think, about that two bedroom suite is it's going to give your student uh, the privacy um, when they want it. Uh, but, you know, it, it's really simple just to knock on your roommate's door. Um, they do share that common area space. We also have, a, a, you know, residence live staff in our halls. Um, whether it's RAs, resident directors, or, or just programs going on in the hall that make it easy for everyone to get to know each other. Um, so no, I, I would say if anything, anywhere you live here on campus is gonna help you foster a good community and help you make friends. Um, someone also said, uh, you said the halls are for a full year, but the prices are by semester. So is the annual cost times two or times three? Not sure if a summer semester is counted. Uh, no, when we um, talk about a full year, uh, full academic year, uh, as far as our residence halls go, um, for the majority of them, uh, and for the most part, uh, you're going to be doing by semester basis. So when you're, uh, you know, kind of doing that cost calculating in your head, you would want to multiply that by two. Um, I have people about asking about the LLP acceptance. 
um, when you'll be notified. Also, I was put on the wait list for healthcare. Um, you'll be notified on a rolling basis. Um, we're working really hard as a department. If you applied for housing before February 15th, to let you know um, as a residence life department um, before March 15th. So we're trying really hard. Um, if you're on the wait list, then you know we're working to process those applications. And so um, if you've already applied for housing, then you should hear before March 15th. Um, I'm looking on here. Uh, oh, my, my, yes. Is there a way to connect with incoming freshmen beforehand to find a roommate? A um, couple different options. Uh, as I mentioned in the application process, you are able to do a roommate search. Uh, also, a lot of times uh, some Facebook groups have usually been started, but the easiest way, in my opinion, to get um, started connecting with other people is to use the hashtag UK20. Um, that's going to be able to be something that you guys can use a lot uh, because it's your class and everything, and it'll just um, help you all out. Um, I see I haven't received any housing bids outside of Creative Arts um, and the application is due on the 15th. I'm not sure what you mean by housing bids. I think you mean um, you were offered a place in the living learning program. Um, you can, if you've already applied to housing and you've already been selected for that living learning program, um, I would try to suggest that you accept the offer um, in the next couple weeks because if we if we wait too long and we don't hear back from you, then we'll send you an email saying we need to offer this spot to somebody else. Um, someone else asked what the LLP for pre-med is. Um, that would be your best bet for pre-med would be the interprofessional healthcare residential college, depending on if your major is something that's you know science or math related. Um, you could also go for STEM cats and then do additional programming. Um, you could do some several several other things depending on your major because pre-med, um, as long as you're having your science and math courses, you can kind of almost do any major. Um, can you buy produce at UK? Um, you can buy certain ingredients, not everything. You, um, we're actually, the uh, Wildcat Pantry in the 90 is a larger scale Wildcat Pantry. It's got uh, more options. And then the one of the new ones that we're adding is going to be our biggest on campus, uh, which is going to have a good amount of food. Um, maybe not all that you need, but it, it'll get you through. Um, and then also we have the restaurant or the uh, grocery stores around the city that uh, you need. Um, let's see here. Do I, do I need to pay my enrollment fee before I pay the housing fee to apply? Uh, if you, by enrollment fee, you mean your tuition? I believe the answer is no. Um, your tuition, you're going to be charged uh, later on in this year. Um, so you can put in that $50 application fee as soon as you want, um, just to get that application in. Um, can freshmen get jobs on campus? Yes. Uh, there's plenty of jobs on campus. Um, I'm going to speak on behalf of dining really quick. Uh, dining is always looking for um, employees, especially students. We love working with students, um, uh, getting jobs. We work around uh, class schedules, and you also receive a free meal um, every shift that you work, which is which is wonderful when you're a student who um, has to factor in the cost of food. But as long as, as far as jobs on campus, um, there actually is a um, a career a career office that could help you uh, with student jobs here on campus. So if you would like to have a job, there's plenty of opportunities uh, for students. Um, I see one is the living learning application due. Um, that the final deadline, like the housing deadline, is April first um, for the living learning programs. Uh, I see. Are we allowed to tour certain residence halls? Would I be allowed to tour Limestone Park One? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a hard, enough hard hats for everyone uh, to tour Limestone Park One because um, currently, right now, Limestone Park One and Two are under construction. Uh, but if you come and do a campus visit here uh, through the visitor center, you're going to be able to see um, two different room types here on campus. You'll be able to see the uh, four-person suite and the two-bedroom suite. Um, those are our two most common rooms. Uh, they make up over 65%. Um, of the rooms here on campus. So I would definitely encourage you to do a campus visit through the visitor center. They got some pretty good tour guides over there. They know what they're talking about. So um. oh, what halls are open during the breaks? Mm. Mm. Those are changing for next year. Um, I can tell you which ones they are for this year, but 
Uh, I know one of the Woodland Glens is, I believe. Soon. Woodland Glen 2 will be open for the breaks next year. Um, there's also, there's three options every year. Also, we had a uh, Woodland Glen 2, uh, Wildcat Coal Lodge, and uh, we're still researching. And there's more. another yeah. one. <laughs> uh, when we figure that one out, we'll let you all know here in a second. Um, where do most freshmen live on campus? Uh, what's cool about living on campus is um, everybody's spread out all, all across the all across campus. Um, there's not like one specific area. That, you know, there's not like a residence hall that's just freshmen um, or anything. Um, I think that really you know plays into the whole community aspect of everything because you can make friends that live um, you know on North Campus. You can have friends that live on South Campus. Um, so if you're going to the JC, you got a buddy to work out with, you can go over there. Um, if you're trying to walk to Rupp Arena, you can pick up somebody by Champions Court. Um, or if you need to hit the library, you and your friends can walk from Hagen. So there's a lot of different options, which is nice. Does your LLP determine your room type due to the building the LLP is located in? Unfortunately, yes. Um, if you get into a living learning program, um, they specifically and intentionally place the living learning program students in a specific area so that you're surrounded by people that have the same interests and the same natures. Um, the break housing, going back to that, um, Champions Court 2, Woodland Glen 2, Ingalls, um, and the Wildcat Coal Lodge. Break housing means that um, if you are someone who's an international student, if you know that ahead of time that Thanksgiving break, um, or we call it fall break, um, <laughs> uh, winter break, which is usually you know a couple weeks, three to four weeks in December to January, um, and then spring break, which is usually in March sometime for a full week. If you know that you're not gonna have another place to stay, if you're uh, intentionally thinking about not traveling and you wanna just kind of stay in Lexington during those breaks, um, normally all the rest of the residence halls close down, so you have to find somewhere else to, to stay when the school is not in session. Um, and so break housing means that throughout all those breaks you'll have a place to stay whether you're an international student someone who lives far away um, or you just don't have any other options um, that's a great way to make sure that you'll have housing for those breaks uh, are all residence halls co-ed uh, for the 16 17 school year all of our residence halls will be co-ed um, however a lot of times that's going to be broken up by floor um, so you're not necessarily going to be next to someone of uh, the same gender or anything and you're not going to have any conflicts there so don't worry um, but guys and girls can be friends, so it works. Cooties. <laughs> uh, let's see. If you picked a roommate who is not in an LLP and you were expect accepted into one, can you still room with them or will you have to pick another roommate? Unfortunately, living learning program students have to live with someone that's also in the living learning program. So if you pick somebody that's not in the living learning program that you have been accepted into, then you will not live with them. Um, if you want them to select the same building, then you could live close by um, or you could encourage them to go back and apply for the living learning program. Um, but you have to have someone that's in a living learning program um, as a roommate. Are there vegetarian food options on campus? There are uh, multiple vegetarian options on campus um, at Blazer and Fresh Food Company, as well as our other restaurants on campus. Also, uh, to mention, we do have a registered dietitian here on campus uh, that works with UK Dining. Um, so if you do have any uh, vegetarian option, if you do have a vegetarian um, preference. eating preference, or if you have allergies or any gluten allergies, stuff like that, uh, we ask you that you that you contact our registered dietitian, um, and she will actually work with the restaurants and will set up a plan based on your uh, preferences and needs. Uh, it looks like we got time for one more question. Uh, we'll do. Do I have? Do I have to have roommates picked by February fifteenth? If I'm applying for early action housing, or can I pick them at a later date? Uh, no, you can have your application in. Um, excuse me. Uh, you can have your application in and then go back and do those roommate preferences. Um, that's more so. Now, however, I will encourage you to get it in as soon as possible because it would make it easier on our assignment staff and everybody to get your preferences in. Did I was just going to add, comment? yeah, I saw one down there. Um, are there any grocery markets on or nearby campus? We, um, sorry that you uh, showed up a little late, but we did mention that there are. Um, there are convenience stores on campus. We have three or two right now. We're adding three more. 
Um, so they are just a convenience store that has produce, um, snacks, and other good things um, for your needs. Uh, guys, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have today. Uh, however, I know there's a lot of questions left out there, and um, you all might still have some. Um, so thankfully, uh, our, what's really cool, first off, if you uh, were able to join us, but you joined us late, uh, this footage will become a, a video on YouTube uh, after we're done with the broadcast. So be sure to keep a lookout for that uh, and that link. Uh, also, you can always reach out to any of us on social media. Um, the accounts were posted earlier on here, but um, they're pretty easy search in the search bar on any of those account um, platforms. So be sure to check it out there. And lastly, you can reach out to us by email. Uh, specifically as far as housing goes, and a lot of times they get a lot of our questions regardless of the topic, uh, it's going to be ukhousing at uky.edu, and our phone number is 859-257-1866. Mel, do you want to give the LLP contact info one more time? Um, if you have specific living learning program questions, the email for us is L-I-V-E. L E A R N, live learn at uky.edu. And we also have our office phone number, which is 859 257 4784. Contacts for us if you would like to get to us through email, um, it's ukdining at uky.edu. Or we also have, <clears throat> excuse me, we also have um, a dining center on campus. Uh, you can find that information. They have a phone number and also. Um, question and answers on our website at uky.campusdish.com. Uh, so that's information for us. Awesome. Well, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and uh, chatting with us today. It was really nice to answer all your questions. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all on the campus uh, on, in the fall. And uh, go Cats. Yeah. <laughs> right, go Cats. Watch them tonight. <laughs>